Hello, my name is Cheryl Meyer, otherwise known as Cheryl M. Health Muse, and I am a health coach. I want to welcome you to my podcast, It Feels Good to Feel Good, Future Proof Your Health. This is a weekly show that will share lifestyle changes that you can make to support your health yourself. Why do I want to share this information with you? Seven years ago, after being a business owner for 20 years, I woke up one morning in horrific pain where every bone and every joint in my body hurt. I went to the doctor, she ran lots of tests, and then she ran some more, and then she ran some more, and finally she called me and announced she was gonna give me steroids, but there was absolutely nothing wrong with me and I should seek therapy. I knew something was wrong, I hurt. So she told me I would be on steroids for the rest of my life, and I refused that I was gonna have a life of pain and pills. So why was I gonna take steroids if there was nothing wrong with me? So I dug in and started researching, and I turned my business over to my staff. I found a functional doctor who confirmed that I had autoimmune disease by making a series of significant lifestyle changes that I could do for myself. Five years later, I had returned to relative health. The best part is that I am now 70, and I, felt, I feel better now than I did when I was 50. I no longer hurt, which is huge. I will always have autoimmune disease, but losing the pain has been amazing. I went back to school at 67 and became a health coach because I want to share everything that I learned with others. And I wrote a book called It Feels Good to Feel Good, Learn to Eliminate Toxins, Reduce Inflammation, and Feel Great Again as the manual I wish that I had had when I got sick, and my book has won 13 awards. So whether you want to future-proof your health and grow old with dignity and grace without dementia and chronic pain and disease, which you don't need to get, or whether or not you already have a chronic condition like autoimmune disease or cancer or heart disease, and you want to learn about what things you can do to improve your long-term health, or whether you want to improve the health of your families and raise healthy children, because 53% of our children have a chronic condition, I look forward to sharing all this information with you. I will tell you, it truly does feel good to feel good, so let's get started. I look forward to having you join me here every week, and I want to give you hope that if you have chronic pain or chronic disease, you can make changes that will improve your health. And if you don't want to go there, you're going to be fine if you listen to the show and put these things into work. I want to give you information so that you can grow old and have a better tomorrow. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. Hello, I'm Cheryl M. Health Muse. I'm a muse because I want to inspire you to a healthier life. And I've shared recently that my mission is to change the way America eats. It's crucial and it's foundational to everything else you can do with your health. Although I do believe in all 12 pillars of health as your health muse, I especially want you to start with food because eating the standard American diet and eating crap, which is carbonated, refined, artificial, and processed, is making us all sick as the dickens. And I want you to start eating from the pharmacy with the F-A-R-A-M-C-Y and stop with the pharmacy with the P-H, popping pills to get yourself to feel better. If you start to eat real food, of all the colors of the rainbow, your body has the correct building blocks and can start to heal, which is why this is now the sixth time that I am running this class and I'm excited to do it again. So stop eating the SAD. That stands for standard American diet, but in reality, it's really very sad. So I wanna to talk to you about why the standard American diet is so sad and what it's doing to us. I'm not talking about the lose weight variety of a diet because those diets are probably bad for you too. But I am talking to you about changing what you eat for your future health. And believe it or not, as you start to do it, 
whatever weight you have to lose will start to drop on its own. But that's not why you're doing my program. You're doing my program to learn how to eat healthy. And I'm really passionate that you get all these tools so that you can eat for your future so that you're not gonna be taking pharmaceuticals in the end. So what is the SAD diet? It's fake food, processed food, fast food, processed frozen food, and believe it or not, it's restaurant food that isn't farm to table. Restaurant food now comes in little baggies, gets sapped, and then gets arranged on your plate at the restaurant. And all those foods are ruining your health. The SAD diet is loaded with sugar, salt, chemicals, and has names of synthetic ingredients in it that you can't recognize and you don't know what they are. If you don't know what they are, your body doesn't know what they are either. They do not promote health in your body. You need real food and you need all the colors because they get together, there's a synergy and they have a little party that creates health in your body. The latest data on America has revealed that over 73% of US adults are either overweight or obese, 73%. Of those, 42% are American adults have obesity and 10% are severely obese, while another 30.7% are overweight. So why do you get overweight? You get overweight because your body is out of balance. I read something when I first got sick with autoimmune disease nine years ago, that if I was overweight, the reality was I was starving my body. At the time, I did not understand that at all. How could I be starving my body if I was overweight? Well, it ends up my body was holding on to every single morsel of nutrition it could get because I wasn't giving it enough. And when I started feeding it real food, real phytonutrients, real minerals, and real vitamins, you'd be surprised how incredibly smart your body is because it starts to thank you and you start to feel really good in a fairly short period of time. Our overweight status is closely associated with the numbers of heart disease, stroke, autoimmune diseases, liver disease, type two diabetes, certain types of cancer and premature death. My talk is usually that if you eat the standard American diet, you're gonna get a standard American disease like I did, I got autoimmune disease, and then you're gonna go on to die the standard American death unless you start to eat real food and change and put the 12 pillars into place. So this is important. But even armed with this knowledge, Americans are regularly lured in by food that is designed on purpose to be hard to resist by big food. So a recent study showed that 88% of adult Americans are metabolically unfit, 88%. And Ben Berkman, the PhD that did the study is a Utah professor and a leading metabolic scientist, and he knows what the culprit is. What does metabolically unhealthy mean? It means that you have poor metabolic health and a higher chance of developing diabetes, heart disease, or stroke. So if you're healthy today and you're eating the standard American diet, you're going down the chute to be metabolically unhappy, and that will become one of those chronic illnesses that I mentioned. It's simply our diet, said Bickman. We're eating the wrong kinds of food in all the wrong quantities, and it's making us not only fatter, but sicker. So in fact, Berkman says that the increasing consumption of healthy fats might be the most important change that you can make, supporting metabolic health, brain health, and more. Now, Back in the 90s, there was a study that was paid for by the sugar industry that had Harvard and Stanford study, was it sugar that made people fat or was it fat that made people fat? And the conclusion was it was fat that made people fat. 
which was a manipulated statistic. In reality, we all started eating things like snack wells. So we moved away from fats and we moved into eating fake sugar and real sugar, both of which are God awful for our health and our bodies. So the most important change you can be for your metabolic health, your brain health and more is to add fats back into your diet. But it's not just any fat. What I want you to add back in are omega-3 fats, which are avocado oil, coconut oil, ghee, olive oil, but make sure that it's real olive oil because the mafia has gotten in there and they're mucking it up with GMO oils, which are the vegetable oils. You don't want that. You want the good oils, includes grapeseed oil, includes avocado oils. You want a good omega-3 oil and you need to increase them in your diet because every cell in your body needs omega-3 oils. Our ancestors knew that fats were the most nutrient dense substances we can eat, said Bickman. They provide you with needed nutrition for your brain and body. They help you feel satisfied. They curb your desire for sweets and they even help train your body to burn excess body fat. However, this is where the issue comes in. Corporations have weaponized your food. Environmental factors like advertising, lack of menu labeling and others, and the addictive properties of industrial food all add together to override our normal biologically and psychological control mechanisms and being fat and obese has become huge business. Big food, big farm, big agriculture. They don't want you to win at this game. So I don't know about you. I used to buy every New York Times bestseller book and try to lose the weight. And I go fine for a little while and then to bing to bang all of a sudden I fell off the wagon. I gained back more than where I started out. I used to even have the last summer, the night before I started one of these diets, knowing full well I wasn't doing it forever. My diet plan, if you take the class with me, is five classes and it's forever. It will teach you how to eat for your future health for the rest of your life. And so that's the big difference. And after two to three weeks, you break the addiction to these foods, the sad foods that you've been eating. And then your body, body starts to party and you move on to other healthy aspects of the 12 pillars because now you've got the foundation in place to build your health. This is the beginning information for a podcast that I'm going to do. I've had my own podcast for two years. It's coming to an end in July, and I felt like it was really important to research this subject and give as much information to all of you as possible about why is it that processing and fast food is making us fat and sick. So this will be my second to last podcast towards the end of July, but I have three more books to read so that I can expand upon the information. Big food doesn't want us to refer to this as an addiction. They claim that food actually lacks some of the technical definitions of an addiction that narcotics have. So they prefer words, you'll love this, like alluring, craveable, smackable. But the aim is the same. They want to create the perfect formula with amounts of salt, sugar, and fat. And it's not healthy fat. It's all those GMO fats that are the vegetable fats, the canola oil, the corn, the soy. Those are the fats that they want. They're cheap and they want to put them in their food and they want to addict you to them. So if you get the perfect formula, the amounts of salt, sugar, and those fats, it sends you over the mood and makes their products totally irresistible. So you get hooked. Understand that until recently, all of these companies, in some cases, were the same people, Philip Morris, who brought you tobacco. Isn't that ducky? And they're using the same strategy to hook you to food since the 90s. Kraft, General Foods, Nabisco, they're all under their Altrio umbrella. And 
they have the same similarities in approach and they're taking no accountability just like they didn't take any accountability for hooking you on tobacco. The tobacco makers sold off their food division and they made that be known, but what they didn't let you know was they maintained a 98% control of the voting rights of the company through its 49.5% stake, ECPRAS. Big Food has many industrial scientists on board to create food sensations that seem real, but they don't use any real ingredients. I first discovered this when I read a book called Pandora's Lunchbox when I was writing my first book after I ditched the pain of my autoimmune disease. And that book, by the way, is called It Feels Good to Feel Good. It's available on Amazon, and it will teach you how I eliminated dozens and dozens of toxins from my life, which allowed me not to ditch autoimmune disease altogether, but I ditched the pain so I feel better at 83, which is what I am today, at 73. Sorry, let's not make me older than I am. I feel better at 73 than I did in my 50s. So the book that I discovered was a book called Pandora's Lunchbox. And Melody Warner had been a New York Times food editor. And she got curious about why processed food and fast food doesn't rot. Weird, huh? Have you ever thought about that? Her book takes a close investigative look at research labs, university food science departments, and the factories that are developing our food. The book opens at a convention of cheap fake food products available from big food to use instead of real food ingredients. These fake food products taste good and they're super addictive, but the problem is they have no food value. And they're doing it with all these fake ingredients. Why? Because they're in business to make a profit. They don't care whether it's making you unhealthy. They want to make money. And the more fake ingredients they put into their food, the more money they make. Yikes, it has no food value. Warner looks at how decades of food science have resulted in the cheapest, most abundant, most addictive, most nutritionally inferior food in the world comes from America and un uncovers startling evidence about the profound health implications of packaged and fast foods that we're eating on a daily basis. Now, some of the statistics are frightening. 53% of us in America have some kind of um, chronic illness and 53% of our children have some kind of chronic illness. So it's important that you listen to me that you hear me, not like people did with tobacco, but they start to change. And that's what my course is all about. Big food actually makes a concerted effort to make their foods not bland, but really well blended. That's how people don't get full too fast and stop eating too soon. If your taste buds are stimulated too much, consumption will stop and snacks need to be eaten non-stop until the package is finished. And even after it's finished, they want your body to be asking for more. And it's programmed into the food. Fullness or satiety is quite a serious enemy for big food. They want to leave you eating more. Now, remember the billboards? I bet you can't eat one. Well, that's probably the most advertising that they've ever done that was accurate. That is not deceptive. They do want you to not only be able to eat one. They want to build that craving right into their food so that you buy it again and again and again. And the re net result is you're overeating whatever that food is. Cheetos is an excellent example of that. There are so many taste sensation in Cheetos, you can't stop and you want more even when you finish the entire bag. The scientists know that an intense taste at the front of your mouth that dies off quickly so that by the time you've finished each mouthful, you are driven to retaste whatever that wonderful taste was that you have lost. The food industry is even researching the connection between the taste receptors on your tongue and the corresponding chemical reaction that occurs in your brain. 
they now can replicate the chemical reaction that may happen on your tongue or the aroma. So they stimulate the test, taste of something without it ever being even remotely real. I hope you're as horrified by all this as I have been. And it's not only how it reacts in your, in your mouth and the signal it sends to your brain, but the crunch is also crucial because there's an auditory element to when you're eating food. They've discovered that if chips don't have the right crunch, then you don't want to eat quite as many because you don't think they're as good. So all of this is built into fast food and processed food. The noise amplifies, goes through your jaw bones, connects to your ears, and you hear that crunch quite loudly when you bite because that's a physical requirement to chew on something and to crunch it. And it distracts you and pours your mind onto, pours your mind onto what you're eating. Researchers have concluded that potato chips were perceived as both being crisper and fresher when they were louder when you chewed on them. Can you believe that they go through all this? So there is a huge influence from auditory cues. It's partly the noise, the noise amplifies, the jaw bones are connected to your ears. You hear the crunch much so very loudly when you bite. It's also the physical requirement that you have to chew on something and to crunch it. It distracts you and that's all good. Okay, so it helps if the food dissolves quickly in your mouth, tricking the brain into believing that no calories have been ingested. So it's now called vanishing caloric density. This has all been tested because big food has unbelievable amounts of money to deceive you into eating food that does nothing good for your body. The ultimate goal is to reach your bliss point. Now that's an important term to big food. You wanna reach, they want you to reach your bliss point. The company's researchers have learned to study their products, fiddle around with the formulas until they hit that perfect spot of just enough and not too much sugar, just enough and not too much salt. And they know that their products will be irresistible if you add a GMO fat into it so that you get this perfect mouth fill and flavor burst all together, which drives you to eat more. There is tremendous amounts of money behind creating tastes and smells that feel real, but in reality are completely artificial. Food from big food needs to have that melt in the mouth appeal. Food scientists have even studied the architecture of your mouth. In a paper that was published in the Journal of Biomechanics, scientists from Nestle actually examined the detection mechanisms in the oral cavity. So they wanted the mouth to detect how well it could tell the difference in thickness of the food that they put in there by a plastic disc they put in the tongue. Now, why did they do this? Because once they figured out what the perfect size was, they started making chocolates in that oval shape that was just perfect in your mouth to create that 10th incredible bliss point and intense satisfaction from the salt, the sugar, and the fat so that you wanted to continue eating more and more of their chocolate. Whatever happens on the tongue triggers a response in the brain. That's why neuroscience has become the next frontier in the food industry. Vessels came out with chocolate candies that were perfect for your mouth to reach your bliss point. So salt, sugar, and fat are the three pillars of the processed food industry. They're the three pillars of the sad diet. And now you'll start to understand why I say it's so sad if that's what you're eating. They trick the brain into tasting something that isn't actually there and not tasting something that actually is there. The man who, read, who wrote the book um, that I read back in 2012, um, was talking about the fact that the brain um, actually gets so deceived 
that when they hit the perfect amount of each of these ingredients, we just buy more and we eat more and we need it and we crave it and we can't wait to get it. And we store it in our kitchens and we go from bag to bag to bag and we overeat. And as a result, 88% of us are metabolically unhappy. And what was it? 60%, 70% of us, 74% I think of us are overweight. Pretty disgusting. Now, this isn't where it stops. There's also something in processed and fast food called natural flavors. What are natural flavors? If you don't know what an ingredient is on a box, you put it back on the shelf. You don't want to put it in your body because your body doesn't know what it is either. Remember that? What natural flavors is, is usually MSG. Now, we all know that MSG is not good for us, right? But now they put it under 39 different names so that you don't know that that's what you're eating. And MSG is an unami flavor. It is the core fifth taste that includes sweet, sour, bitter, and salty. And it means essence of deliciousness. And MSG does all of that for us. In Japanese, it's the essence of um, deliciousness. And it's often described as meaty, savory deliciousness that deepens flavor. So you don't even know that's what you're eating with natural flavors. So I wanna show you why you need to take my class and learn how to uh, get away from the addiction in a really short period of time so that you start craving real food and you start craving all the different colors because they're so good for your body. And then your body has the building blocks to start to restore health for you. There is unbelievable amounts of money spent behind creating tastes and smells, smells that feel real, but in reality are completely artificial. We're not talking about food actually being real anymore unless you're buying real fruits and vegetables. And if you are buying real fruits and vegetables, I really want you to buy organic. And I explain why in the class because you don't need a nice, healthy bite of poison with every bite of your food. You need clean, beautiful produce that feeds your body all the wonderful phytonutrients that are in all the different colors of fruits and vegetables. And you wanna eat all the colors as close to possible. It doesn't mean you eat them all on the same day, but having a couple big salads with all the colors in it during the week just creates up the perfect synergy for your body to start to create health because everything you're putting in your mouth is real. And by the way, cooking is non-negotiable. You have to cook because you need to control what you're putting in your body and you are worth it. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be really simple cooking, but you need to control what you're putting in your own body and what you're putting in your children's bodies. And this is not only good for your family, it's also really good for the earth because all those fake ingredients and all of those pesticides and herbicides being sprayed on conventional uh, fruits and vegetables goes into our ground, goes into our earth. It's creating all our good vitamins and minerals out of our food. It's going down into our groundwater. It's coming out your tap. It's going into the streams. And then it's going into the rivers and flushing out to the ocean. And it's killing all the life along the way. Plus, it's going up into the environment and causing gases and difficulties so that it's good for you, it's good for your family, and it's good for the earth. Now, I discovered a man who used to work for big food. He was a marketer for the big food industry. And his last name is Bradley. And he left big food because he got disgusted that this food was synthetic, completely contrived and created. And he states, because of that, there are so many problems, our bodies are tricked. And when our bodies are tricked, repeatedly dramatic things begin to happen like weight gain or endocrine disruption or diabetes or hypertension or chronic illnesses. And what is it that goes into the chronic illness bucket? Autoimmune disease, which is what I got, cancer, heart disease, liver disease, diabetes, 
all of those things and cancer, if I didn't say it, they all go into the bucket of chronic illness. And if you start to eat from the pharmacy and you start to eat organic, your body has the right building tools to not go that direction because you're eating healthy food. Um, I've been doing a little book on phytonutrients. When I first started researching, they thought there were 1500 phytonutrients, which are chemicals that nature has put into our plant food, not for us, but for the plant, because they help it be successful at life and fend off animals and keep it alive and soak in the sun. Well, there's actually a phytonutrient that shoots darts at cancer cells. It goes right into the cell and shoots darts and kills them off. Did you know that real food could do that for your body? It's amazing. So once you take my first class, which is ditch that sad diet and stop eating crap, I'm going to want you to take my second class, which is Food Quality Matters, because you get to learn everything you ever wanted to know about fruits and vegetables, but didn't know who to ask. And that includes all the phytonutrients. I said there were 1,500 when I started doing this nine years ago. They now believe there are over 50,000 of them that come from the plant world, and they're amazing. So we need to harness the power of nature to make ourselves healthy and to live longer and thrive without all these chronic illnesses and without popping all these pills. There are three observations by Bradley on his food blog and they're all why he exited the food industry, which is big food. Big food is driven totally by profit. He wants you to think critically. Most claims and advertising that are on television or in magazines that are made by big food companies are meant to manipulate you. He used to do the manipulation. He was a big muck in a big food company for marketing. So they don't educate you, read your labels and do your research. And my rule is if there's an ingredient on the box and you don't know what it is, you put it back, you don't put it in your body because your body can't use it. And then the third thing is clearly understand there is no free lunch, not in anything, but especially not in the food that you're eating from the big food industry. Over the long term, you always get what you pay for. Now, I will agree with you that big food is cheap, but it's only for cheap on the front end. It is not cheap on the back end because what happens when you eat? Big foods, processed food. Cheap food becomes very expensive when you add up all the true costs, like the taxes you pay to subsidize the big food industry. Why do our um, legislatures do that? They're not only paying conventional farming to poison us, but they're actually subsidizing all these big food companies to make us sick. They're a big part of the problem, by the way, but you can be an army of one and control your own body so you don't have to hand your health over to them. Um, health consequences like obesity and diabetes are costing us a fortune. The devastating harm to our environment, the inhumane treatment of animals that are raised within the industrialized food system. These all have huge costs to us individually that big food and big egg and big farm causes. And so you need to control your own life and your own health. And think about it. Our healthcare system is broken. Why is our healthcare system broken? Because 54% of us have some kind of chronic illness. It can't keep up with us. And yet we continue to eat all this big food, sad diet, and that's only making more of us get sick and putting a bigger and bigger strain on our healthcare system. So come figure out how to get away from this food. I will teach you everything you need to know so that you can pull away, you can start to eat real food. Now, what happens when you pull away? One of the things that the SAD diet does is it mucks around with all your hormones, starting with all your feel-good hormones. It mucks around with the dopamine in the middle of your brain, lights your brain up like a pinball machine. And then when it, you get high, 
and then you come down. And when you come down, you want to eat more because you want to release more dopamine because you love that feeling. But while it's mucking with that, it's mucking with all your other hormones. It mucks around with your serotonin, which is your feel good hormone. It's actually not made in the brain. It's made in your gut, but there's a vagus nerve that goes right up to your brain. So if you're eating all this crap, you're Serotonin isn't up to full form either, so you're not getting the big boost from it. It mucks around with your GABA. What does GABA do? If you don't have adequate GABA, you get anxiety. And it mucks around with your mood. Your moods are high and your moods are low because you're eating all this processed food. And it's not just the sugar gang, it's also the chemicals. And the biggie, it mucks around with your insulin. And by mucking around with your insulin, your moods are going from high to low to high to low. Anybody out there who's ever had hypoglycemia, which I had in my 20s, didn't know that, and I was going to be diabetic in my 50s, it mucks around with everything. And in the end, you get diabetes type 2. And that is not a good thing for you to have either. And that's part of the metabolic disorder. So it's all a big deception without any food value. The system is rigged, obesity is big business, and big food could care less about your health. As a nation, they're only concerned about their profits. So remember all that. The big discovery I made, which is why I decided to do the class, is we have two hormones I had never even heard of, and they're called ghrelin and leptin. They are your hunger hormones. So if you can harness your hunger hormones and stop the sad diet and the crap from dampering them down, then you can break the addiction. You can walk away and your taste buds come back. You start feeling fantastic. Real fruits and vegetables start to really taste yummy and it gets easier and easier to eat real food and to drive yourself to cook because the advantage has become so great that you don't wanna give up feeling great for anything. I even teach you once you do this and you break the addiction, how do you go out for dinner at restaurants? How do you go to someone else's house for dinner? Because most likely in the beginning at least, you're gonna be eating different than the rest of America, but we are influencers within three degrees of separation. And what happened with me when I changed how I ate and I was not willing to give it up, my friends started moving towards me. And so the three degrees of separation, I became the influencer. It was fabulous. And now many of my friends eat much healthier and that will happen to you too. So don't be afraid to do this because the benefits and the whys are huge. You can actually go on my blog and pick out your why card to help you do the breaking of the addiction because if you have a big enough why, you can do anything. Now, understand my class is not a diet. My class teaches you how to eat for your future health. But I will also share with you that almost everyone who's taken the class from me has lost weight and I have lost 65 pounds, not because I'm trying to diet anymore. No more New York Times bestsellers for me. My body is dropping the weight because it's come back into balance. So it feels good. And by coming back into balance, it's not afraid it's never going to get another nutrient again. So now it's willing to process the goodness right in my body to utilize the building blocks that it gets and to let go of the excess because of the things it wasn't getting. So the bottom line is right above here in my banner, you click on it, it will take you to how to sign up for my class. It starts July the 26th and everyone who's taken the class, but one has one from this and that one person didn't like fruits and vegetables. So this was the wrong program for them because it's all about eating real food. And if you read down, when you click on the banner, it will take you to my testimonial page on my blog where you can read what everybody who has taken this class has said about it so far. Now, I don't have any testimonials yet on my Food Quality Matters class because I am just two thirds done giving it for the first time, but everybody's learning a whole lot. And I have information in my second class and probably even in my first 
that you're not going to get anywhere else. I'm a researcher from Berkeley, so I like to dig in and I dug in looking for the puzzle pieces for my own health. And so now I have put these two programs together to give you all the tools that you need to break the addiction and to live a healthier life. What my class teaches you is to only eat food that loves you back. Yesterday, I did a video about how big food has been mucking around so much with, the, with our food that it's loaded with all kinds of fake ingredients now. They have figured out the perfect way to make your taste, your hearing, your eyes, your brain, your stomach think you're eating something delicious and real, but there's nothing real about it. And what they've done is hijack our health and all our feel-good hormones, especially two I had never heard about. So I want to talk at length in this video about the two appetite hormones that this food is mucking with and why I want you to take my ditch, the standard American diet and stop eating crap class because my mission is to change the way America eats. Okay, one of the things I talked about in yesterday's video was that 88% of us are metabolically unhappy and unhealthy. 88% of us are metabolically unhealthy and 74% of us are either fat, overweight, or obese. 74%. And it's directly attributed by all the sides that are talking about what big food is doing to processed and fast food. It's all attributed to the diet that we're getting from that food. So the key is to learn how to eat real food. You need all the colors of the rainbow from a farm as close to you as possible because, and you need them organic because you don't need poisons in that food either. So, and the joy of buying it close, if you can, if you can't get it from the grocery, but if you can buy it close, it has vital phytonutrients at full power when you buy it close to when it gets actually picked. And so that's why I want to encourage you, especially now in the summer, to get it from a farmer's market or the farm itself. But no matter what, eat organic real food because each color has different phytonutrients in it, which are the building blocks for you to build every cell in your body, which your body is doing all the time. And you want to be building the brick house. You don't want to be building the straw house or the stick house. You want to be building the brick house. So you've got to give your body all these beautiful phytonutrients. And it gets none of them from the standard American diet and all the crap. So let's talk about what happens with sugar and processed food and synthetic chemicals mucking around with your ghrelin and your leptin. Now, I'm somebody who my entire life was trying to lose weight. I probably own every New York bestseller book up until the day I got autoimmune disease because I was always trying to find a way to drop the weight. I was severely overweight. I thought I had a problem with willpower. So when I got sick and I started researching and I started changing how I ate because it occurred to me that eating GMOs, which have poison built right into them, and eating things with toxins sprayed on them from my food, and then eating all these fake ingredients probably wasn't gonna help me rebuild my health. And I had so much pain, my why was huge. So I was gonna find a way to return to relative wellness. To win, we have to break our addiction to all these ingredients in processed food. So in order to do that, we can reactivate the hormones that regulate appetite. So let me tell you how I knew that this was true because when I read it, it hit me right smack in the middle of the head. I used to eat a huge Thanksgiving dinner, an enormous Thanksgiving dinner. And then two minutes later, I'd be in the kitchen slicing away at the pumpkin pie or eating extra spoonfuls of stuffing or mashed potatoes. And I, I even got to the point where I was thinking, how could I possibly be hungry? I seem to be hungry all the time. How can that be? I just ate a huge dinner. And yet these things still are calling my name for the kitchen. Well, ghrelin and leptin regulate your appetite. 
And so if they're turned off and they're dampened down, you don't stand a chance because you're eating because you don't know you're full. So that's how this works. Leptin actually controls our hunger. When leptin is not working properly, our brain thinks it's starving. So we're driven to eat. These addictions suppress the hormones. So our addictions to process food, they don't wanna call them addictions. They're fine to call them cravings, however. Those cravings are dampening down your feel-good hormones. What does leptin do for your body? It's a hormone that your body fat releases and it helps your body maintain normal weight on a long-term basis. It does this by regulating hunger, providing the sensation of feeling full. No leptin, you don't feel full, so you keep wanting to eat because you keep thinking you're hungry. Leptin's main role is long-term regulation of energy, including the number of calories you eat and expend, as well as how much fat you store in your body. Now, I hated counting calories. Never liked it. Used to do it to try to lose weight. Also did the counting points routine. Never liked to do it. I don't do any of that anymore. I just eat real food. And that's what I want to show you in my class works because it's a game changer. The leptin system actually evolved back in our paleo days to keep humans from starving or overeating, both of which have made us, would have made us less likely to survive in our natural environment. Today, leptin is very effective in keeping us from starving, but something broke in the mechanism that's supposed to prevent us from overeating. And what broke is our addiction to processed food and all those words that are on the boxes of the frozen food that you are craving, but that don't give your body any nutrition at all. My rule is if there's something on the box that you do not know what it is, or you can't pronounce it, you don't put it in your body. And that includes things like natural flavors, which I talked about in the last tape. Natural flavors is often MSG, which is a neurotoxin, and it's an anami. It creates the absolute perfect taste sensation so that you want to keep coming back for more. <clears throat> so the bottom line is leptin is very effective to keep us from starving but something got broken. Leptin is produced by fat cells in your body. Its main role is to regulate fat storage and how many calories you eat and burn. However, if your signaling doesn't work, while copious leptin might be present, your brain doesn't acknowledge it. This condition is known as leptin resistance. It makes your brain change behavior in order to regain body fat. <clears throat> so you eat more and you reduce your energy, both of which are not good for weight loss. So eating more and exercising less is the underlying cause of weight gain, but rather a possible consequence of leptin resistance, which is a hormonal defect. For most people who struggle with leptin resistance, willing yourself to overcome this starvation signal is next to impossible. People who have obesity have high levels of leptin, but if the leptin signal isn't working, it can cause hunger and reduce the number of calories that you burn. So what causes leptin resistance? Inflammation. I certainly had plenty of inflammation when I got out of immune disease. And so getting your inflammation under control is really important. And what did I find was the best way to do that? To change what I fed my body. By feeding my body all those beautiful phytonutrients that are in all the colors of the rainbow, I gave my body the tools to fight the inflammation. Free fatty acids, having elevated, elevated free fatty acids in your bloodstream increases fat metabolites in your brain and interferes with leptin. And then having high leptin unto itself having elevated levels of leptin in the first place seems to cause leptin resistance. Can it be reversed? Yes. And what's number one on the list? Avoid eating processed food. If processed food is your main dietary ingredient, you probably are gonna have a weight problem if you don't have one now. 
And as I commented, 74% of us are overweight or obese today. It's a huge portion of the population. <clears throat> Highly processed foods compromise the integrity of your gut and increase inflammation. So the best way to take care of your inflammation is the best way to get your leptin under control. Now, what does inflammation cause? Autoimmune disease, liver disease, heart disease, um, cancer. They're all created from inflammation. So you wanna get your inflammation under control today for your future health. And if you're having any symptoms of any of those diseases, this is how you get them to take you back towards wellness. You need to eat soluble fiber. In my program, I talk about why fiber is so important. And it's important not only because it grabs the toxins that your liver is releasing to get them out of your body, and they help you come back to balance. And I have decided that poor health means your body is out of balance. So you wanna come back into balance because that will be your route back to health. Exercise, physical, physical activity can actually reverse leptin resistance, poor sleep. How many of you out there are struggling to sleep? Well, leptin actually upset your sleep and you need to get your seven hours of continuous sleep in order to come back into balance and fight leptin resistance. You need to lower your triglycerides. What makes your triglycerides high in the first place? Sugar in all its forms. So by taking my ditch your standard American diet class, you actually cut the sugar off so that you can actually start to impact your triglycerides. <clears throat> now it doesn't happen overnight. It's taken me, what, five years to get my triglycerides to finally start to drop. I'm still not down in perfect range, but I've come a long way because I don't eat much sugar anymore because I'm eating real food. And that's a way for you to get your leptin, resist leptin resistance under control. And the last one is to eat quality protein. We talk about that in the class. Quality protein, in my mind, means you're eating animals that eat their own specific diet. A cow eats grass, he's got two or three, I read somewhere, stomachs, he's got at least two. And so if you're feeding him GMO grain, he's not getting his natural diet. If you're letting him eat grass all the way through until he is butchered for your plate, then he's eaten his regular diet. So he's a healthier animal than the ones who are not going to eat their regular diet. And food quality matters. That's why you want to buy organic produce. That's why you want to buy grass-fed, grass-finished, pastured meats. It all makes a difference for you to come back into balance and be healthy. Bottom line, leptin resistance is one of the main reasons people gain weight and have such a hard time losing it. So change your diet change your health to the 12 pillars of health so that you come back into balance. And then without dieting, I lost 65 pounds. And almost everybody who has taken my stop eating the sad diet has lost weight, even though I am very clear that it's not a weight loss diet. It is learning how to eat for your future health because you wanna grow old and you wanna have your energy and you don't wanna hurt and you don't want to have leptin resistance, and you want to normalize your weight, all of that happens when you start to eat real food and stop eating all the processed crud, okay? It is directly attributed to the Western diet that we are so sick. So obesity is not usually caused by grief, laziness, or a lack of willpower. So guess what? It's not your willpower that's the problem. It's that you're dampering down all your great hormones that keep your body in balance. Now, the second one of these two appetite suppressing hormones is ghrelin. Ghrelin plays a big part too. It's a hormone that's actually produced in your gut and it's referred to as the hunger hormone. Kind of like the hunger game, this ghrelin romps through your system and creates hunger. And it signals your brain that you're hungry and it tells it to become hungry and to go seek out food. Now, something that's happened to me since I am eating real food is I'm not that hungry anymore. Food never calls my name from the kitchen anymore. 
I eat at fairly regular times and I eat food that fulfills my nutritional needs. It's not that I'm not a foodie anymore. It's just now I'm a foodie with a totally different kind of food that's feeding my body nutrition. And I swear to you, once you start feeling good, you are not willing to give that up. So you're really not deprived that you're not eating all that cruddy food that's giving your body no support at all. Ghrelin's main function is to increase your appetite. It makes you consume more food, it makes you take in more calories, and it makes you store fat. It also affects your sleep-wake cycle. So if you're not getting sleep, then your hormones are all mucked up and it's all connected. Everything that goes on in your body is interconnected. That's the beauty of studying functional medicine because they don't believe that anything is independent. As an example, I have three podcasts on the liver. As goes the liver, goes the heart. The heart is the number one cause of death in this country. The number one cause of heart disease is a sick liver. So this all fits together and it's all important. And if you keep eating that crappy food, you're never gonna win and come into balance and support all the different parts of your body. Ghrelin is produced in your stomach and secreted by when your stomach is empty. It enters your blood sign and then goes to your brain to the hypothalamus, which then helps regulate your hormones and your appetite. It seems to be a hormone that maybe couldn't directly be controlled with drugs, diets, or supplements, but there are things that you can do that help maintain healthy habits. It's all interconnected. If you maintain a moderate weight, ghrelin increase, does, um, studies show ghrelin increases through dying. So you get hungry when you diet. If you bring your body back into balance by eating real food and meat that's eating his own specific diet, you come back into balance and then that lowers how much ghrelin you're releasing so that you're not hungry all the time and you're not sending that signal to your brain. You have to prioritize sleep. You have to increase your muscle mass. You have to eat more protein and it must be quality protein. Even if it's vegan protein, it needs to be protein without um, GMO, BT toxin in it, like soy is, 93% of soy has BT toxin in it. And you have to get to a point where you maintain a stable weight. Then your gear lowers, you're not hungry all the time, and it's so much easier to maintain healthy eating habits. So this is what all that processed food is looking around with. It doesn't take forever to come back into balance. In as little as two to three weeks, by cutting off the processed food, the sugar, the salt, and the omega-6 GMO oils that are in processed food, your body starts coming back into balance, the super cravings go away, and it gets so much easier then to maintain your new heating habits and to sustain them. I even teach you what to do to go out to restaurants for dinner, what to do when you're invited to somebody else's house for dinner. I have lived this way now for five years and I sustain it and I feel better at 73 than I did at 53. So this stuff works and it helps promote your health and it all starts, I believe, foundationally with what you're putting into your body. So you have to put an effort into controlling what you eat. Now, I commented that there's also a new hormone that's been recently discovered, and it was just discovered by a team of scientists from Stanford and then from Baylor University and was published last week in Nature magazine. And this is a hormone that is called, I think it's um, Lacfe, L-A-C-P-H-E, Lacfe. Lacfe is actually a hormone that's released from your muscles when you exercise. Never knew it existed. And so now they want to figure out how much does it impact appetite and how can they harness it? I found a lot of new research on leptin and ghrelin in order to do this video from when I originally discovered them. And it's because they're studying all this stuff, including Lacfe, because they want to make a diet pill. They want to make a diet pill to curb your appetite with a pharmaceutical. But guess what? If you follow what I'm talking about in this class, you know you should be moving, then your muscles will release lactate. 
you know you should be eating real food. That wasn't particularly a surprise to me when my doctor told me I needed to do that. You know you need to be eating real food, that that will give your body nourishment. So if you do those two things, you don't need the pill because you automatically curb your appetite, come into balance, and then your weight starts to fall off. So this is the principle behind my class. Um, in order to join, if you go to my Cheryl Meyer homepage, and I'm Cheryl Meyer 3, apparently there's two other Cheryl Meyers out there. So go to my Cheryl Meyer homepage, click on the banner, and that will take you to links to join my class. I would love to have you also take my second class, but I want you to take my first class to get started because that's the foundational information. The second class is Food Quality Matters and it's 12 parts and it will show you where to buy food for the best prices, what's in season. That's a thing of supply and demand when it's in season, it's cheaper. How to get the best prices to feed your body quality food and then how to pick the best one, how to store it, how to make it last as long as possible, how long it does last, how to wash it, how to clean it, how to use all of it. I have a series of blogs on my website about how to use broccoli stalks, how to use cauliflower leaves. Cauliflower leaves, by the way, are super for strong bones, so you want to be eating them. I teach you everything you ever wanted to know about fruits and vegetables, but didn't know who to ask. And in those 12 classes, you not only learn all of that, you learn how many toxins are being sprayed on it if it's not organic, and you learn all the vitamins and the minerals that are in each vegetable and fruit, and then finally, what all the real gifts are, which are the phytonutrients, which then feed your body all the building blocks to keep rebuilding cells so that you have a strong immune system and that you are as strong and healthy as you can be. So join my first, first class if you like that, then join my second class because I don't think you're going to find this information anywhere else. There are a lot of sugar detoxes out there, but I don't think they go into depth about the chemicals. And because I'm Wonder Woman, I'm fighting Dr. Poison. So come join me. We'll talk about Dr. Poison and the Duke of Deception and we'll get you on track so that you're no longer hungry all the time. It's not willpower, but your body starts to come back into balance and along the way, it starts to drop the weight. Thank you. I'm amused because I want to inspire you to be the best that you can be. And self-care is really feeding yourself well and taking care of yourself because then you show up as the best possible you and that's what you want to do. So join me. I look forward to having you there. Thank you. Hello, this will be my last podcast on voiceamerica.tv. So I wanted to thank you all for following me, for listening to me, for making me one of the most successful podcasts on voiceamerica.tv, part of the RHG network. I have loved doing these podcasts, but I have a new idea and I want some time to be able to create it. I'm hoping that you will all come follow me on CherylMHealthNews.com. On those pages, you'll find a form where you can sign up for my newsletter, which will keep you informed as I roll out new projects. And I want to tell you a little bit about the new project. I've come up with a questionnaire. My husband is a statistician where you can help determine what your own toxic load is. That was a question I was constantly asked when I was out talking to the public before COVID because I have a blog about the signs that I missed that told me that toxic load and inflammation was building in my body. So I wanted to have a questionnaire where you could determine where it is that you are out of balance. And then my thought is I'm going to do a series of tiny courses, which I'm going to call Health Bites or something like that, that are going to be in a membership area on the back end of my website, CherylMHealthNews.com, where for a small monthly fee, you can go in and according to wherever you need to come and balance, according to this questionnaire, you can listen to a series of videos that are three to five minutes long. Now, you know I like to talk a lot, so if I can keep it under five minutes, I'll be happy. But I want you to be able to get the health information that you need 
in shorter, smaller, bite-sized pieces. My rollout date is planned to be in January 2023, and I am really excited about doing this project. Now, in the meantime, the voice-only part of my podcast has moved to iTunes and to Lipson and to some of the other platforms for podcasts, and then we're going to move all of the videos themselves into its own um, place on YouTube under Cheryl M. Health Views. And so you'll be able to still watch my videos. I think they're very valuable. As I learned information from my own health, I wanted to share it with all of you because I want you all to know just how good it feels to feel good. Now, these tapes that this is attached to is in two, one, two, three segments. The first two segments are about my two classes. And I am very passionate that you should watch my courses and join in with us because the information, frankly, is priceless. When I woke up that morning in extreme pain, not knowing that I had autoimmune disease because I missed everything but the two by four that came down and hit me in the head, I don't want any of you to end up there. So I have a class on breaking the addiction to processed and fast food and on rebalancing your body and getting your ghrelin and your leptin to not be snuffed out by all the chemicals that are in those foods. And then I have a second course that I commented was gonna be 12 parts while I just finished my first round with it. And I'm gonna shorten the segments and make more of them. So it's gonna be a 16 part class. And the information in this class, you're not gonna find anywhere else. It's called Food Quality Matters. And the reason why it's so important is I want you to understand where to buy organic food, why it's important to buy organic food, what quality meat looks like, what quality vegan foods look like, and then how not to waste the food so that you make the most of your organic dollars, all the way down to how to store the food, how to buy it right after it's harvested so it lasts the longest, and then all the gifts that that food has to offer you, whether it's a cucumber or a tomato or a strawberry. Nature has packed our natural fruits and vegetables with all kinds of phytonutrients. Now, when I first started studying all of this 10 years ago, there were 1,500 that they knew about. Then I read that there were 12,000. Then I read that there were 25,000. When I wrote this class, I was under the impression that they now had, were aware of 50,000. And I just read from Ocean Robbins that there's 100,000 different plant phytonutrients. These are substances that the plant makes for itself so that it can survive, but they have incredible wonders, miracles, built into their substances for our bodies and our health. We need them to continually rebuild new cells and we need them so that we keep a strong immune system so the next COVID type um, illness that comes down the track will have such strong immune systems that we won't get it because we've been eating correctly from the pharmacy and that's F-A-R-M-A-C-Y which you've heard me talk about on these podcasts before. My next class, which if you're on my nailing list, I will also announce it's going to be on toxins, on toxins in your home, toxins in your cosmetics, toxins in your cleaning products, toxins in your smells in your home, toxins in your bug sprays. I want everybody to be aware of all the products that Dr. Poison is putting in our house that are off-gassing and making our bodies sick which is the subject of my first book, but I'm going to go into it in more depth. I strongly recommend my first and my second book if you're interested in rebuilding your health. The first one is It Feels Good to Feel Good, Learn to Eliminate Toxins, Reduce Inflammation, and Feel Great Again. And the second one is called Feeling Good, Learning to Sustain Your Health in Community and Everyday Life which is the backup book to the first book because my functional doctor asked me to write it because my husband and I had to figure out since we were eating different than everybody else in our life, how to sustain our good eating habits and our good lifestyle habits 
and still have a social life because that's important too. Community is the number one element for long-term health as disclosed by the Blue Zones, which I've also talked about on these podcasts. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I hope you will sign up for my newsletter so that you know when I roll out my tiny courses and so that you know when I roll out my next course, which will be on environmental toxins and how they're making us sick. You'll also know when you can take the questionnaire to learn where your toxic load is. Taking the test is going to be free, but then if you want to get all of the bite-sized pieces that will help you come back into balance when you know what's wrong with your body, then that's why you would go to my little mini courses or tiny courses to get information in short bursts instead of an hour to hour and a half long podcasts. So I'm excited to do all these projects. I am very grateful to all of you out there. Please own your own home, own your own health because your doctor can't possibly know everything that you're feeling in your body. So if it's not resonating with you or he's not giving you enough time to explain how you're feeling, go research and then go back to him and have a robust conversation from a point of knowledge, which is exactly what I did when I got sick. The last thing is I do do one-on-one coaching. So if you're interested, I have some great Um, testimonials on my courses and my coaching. So go noodle around on my site, read my blogs, and then you can also write to me at CherylMHealthViews at gmail.com to set up your first appointment with me, which is free. And what I will guarantee you is that I will listen to you and I will hear you, which was not happening with me when I was seeing my doctor and I was sick. Not only that, but they didn't think anything was wrong with me. They wanted me to get mental therapy and it ends up, they were just running all the wrong tests when I finally got to a functional doctor and learned what we were supposed to be doing. We found all of the missing puzzle pieces to why I was so sick. I'm still looking for puzzle pieces all the time and I want to share them with all of you. And then the last thing I want to tell you is I am Cheryl Meyer three on Facebook. And I also have a private Facebook called Feeling Good, um, which I invite you to come join because I talk about all the pillars of health on both of those pages every day. And so continue to learn with me as I discover puzzle pieces for my own health. And remember, I'm 73 and I'm feeling pretty darn good. As I discover these puzzle pieces, I want to share them with you. And if you join my Facebook group and you join my, my Cheryl Meyer three page, all the information I share is for free. So come on this ride with me. Thank you for being a loyal follower of my podcast. I am very grateful and I hope to see you soon in one of my courses or on one-on-one coaching or in my next class on toxicity in the environment. So thank you. I look forward to seeing you all again sometime soon.